We want to think now about the pleural membranes that surround the lungs and line the inside of the thoracic cavity. And it's essential to understand these membranes, to understand the mechanics and the, the mechanisms of what is actually going on to facilitate the process of breathing in and breathing out. So first of all, just a little bit of anatomy, let's think about the pleural membranes. Now there's actually only one pleural membrane, but it's folded in on itself, so it's much better to think about two pleural membranes. And first of all, we have the external pleural membrane, which is going to go around the inside of the thoracic cavity. Adherent to the inside of the thoracic cage. And also, this outside membrane, that is the parietal pleural membrane. Parietal perimeter outside. The parietal pleural membrane also lines the surface of the diaphragm. Across there. And as we've said, or well, actually we haven't said, I'll say it now, each lung is surrounded by its own pleural membrane. So there's a pleural membrane for the right and for the left. So there we have the parietal pleural membrane lining the internal surface of the chest wall and the surface of the diaphragm and it is fixed. These are fixed so the parietal pleural membrane is adherent to, is fixed to the superior surface of the diaphragm. The same membrane as it goes around the inside of the thoracic cavity is fixed to the tissues of the chest wall and is very hard to peel away anatomically. So that's the parietal pleural membrane and of course there's one on each lung <coughs> because they're both in their own pleural membrane. Parietal pleural membrane on that side. Again covering the superior surface of the diaphragm but each lung having its own. And then this membrane actually reflects back on itself but we'll call this one a different membrane. The one I'm doing here in green is the visceral pleural membrane and the visceral pleural membrane is lining the surface of the lung and again it's fixed to the surface of the lung it's very hard to peel off from the surface so it's fixed onto the surface of the lung so we see the parietal pleural membrane surrounding the inside of the thoracic cavity and the visceral pleural membrane adhered to the surface of the lung and it's the same on this side the visceral pleural membrane on the right side fixed to the surface of the lung all the way around so visceral and parietal pleural membranes fixed to the surface. Now what this means <coughs> is that as the chest wall goes up and out, if the chest wall moves up and out, so if you imagine that that pen is the chest wall moving up and out, because the parietal pleural membrane is fixed to it, then they will move together. So as the chest wall moves up and out, it will take the parietal pleural membrane with it because the parietal pleural membrane is adherent to the inside of the chest wall. And the situation is the same with the diaphragm. We have the diaphragm there, but the parietal pleural membrane is adherent to it, so that will move with the diaphragm. Now, the visceral pleural membrane is attached to the surface of the lung and in life actually, although I've actually drawn a space here between the visceral and the parietal pleural membrane, in life the two are actually sucked together. They are sucked onto each other. And in fact between the visceral and the parietal pleural membrane 
there's a negative pressure of about four millimeters of mercury. So the two are actually sucked together. So what we have, <coughs> if we imagine that this is the lung here, the visceral pleural membrane surrounds the surface of the lung and is adherent to the surface of the lung. That is the visceral pleural membrane. The parietal pleural membrane, if we can look at that on the, the skeleton model, the parietal pleural membrane is going to be adherent to the inside of the thoracic cage. So when the ribs move, the parietal pleural membrane will move with it. So what we have all together is the parietal pleural membrane there. We have the lung with its visceral pleural membrane. So there we've got the visceral pleural membrane in the lung, which of course is inside the thoracic cavity. And then we've got the parietal pleural membrane in there as well. With a negative pressure in between the two. So what this actually means, if you think about these two acetates as the pleural membranes, let's imagine that this one is the parietal pleural membrane and this one is the visceral pleural membrane. So I'm just going to put the visceral pleural membrane down there for now. Now between the two there is some serous fluid. And because there's fluid, that means the two membranes will be sticking together. Now, if we go in and look at this, we'll see that what I've got here, this is the parietal pleural membrane, and that is the visceral pleural membrane beneath. So when I lift the parietal pleural membrane, I think you can see the visceral pleural membrane is coming with it. And of course, this parietal pleural membrane is attached to the inside of the thoracic cage and the superior surface of the diaphragm. And the visceral pleural membrane is attached to the lung. So that means when the chest wall moves up and out, the parietal pleural membrane moves up and out. The negative pressure between the two pleural membranes, because they're sucked together, means that the visceral pleural membrane will rise with the parietal and of course the lung is attached to the inside of the visceral pleural membrane where my hand is now would be the lung. So because of this negative pressure and because of the parietal being adherent to the inside of the chest and the visceral being adherent to the surface of the lung that means that the lung will automatically move with the chest wall and with the diaphragm. That's essential. So, <clears throat> visceral and parietal, chest wall moves up and out, lung moves out with it. And it is that expansion of the lung in all directions with the downward movement of the diaphragm and the up and outward movement of the thoracic cage, the ribs and intercostal muscles, that actually increases the volume of the lung. And uh, this is Boyle's law in physics. Boyle's law basically says if you increase the volume, you'll decrease the pressure to facilitate inspiration. But Boyle's law also says when you decrease the volume to breathe out, that will increase the pressure, causing the air to be blown out of the lungs. So we have this vital anatomical arrangement of the parietal and the visceral pleural membranes. And there are so many clinical applications to this. One is that the parietal pleural membrane on the outside is absolutely full of nociceptors, pain receptors. So the parietal pleural membrane is very pain sensitive. So whenever you're carrying out a thoracotomy procedure, 
penetrating a patient's chest for whatever reason, that is extremely painful. Yes, it's going to hurt when you penetrate the skin and the muscle, but nothing like as much as it's going to hurt when you penetrate the parietal pleural membrane. So do be kind to your patients and always make sure that area is always well infused with local anaesthetic. And another application is penetrating chest injuries. So for example, if someone gets stabbed in the chest, as unfortunately happens, you get a stab wound to the chest, then that is going to let outside atmospheric air from the atmosphere at 760 millimeters of mercury into this pleural space, which should be at four millimeters of mercury pressure less. It's going to let the atmospheric air in. Now, we noted that the parietal pleural membrane is fixed to the chest wall, and we noted that the visceral pleural membrane is fixed to the lung outside surface. And it's very hard to peel those off. But between the two, there are no tissues connecting between the two pleural membranes. And this is anatomically what we call a potential space. So in you at the moment, there is no space. If that hand is the parietal pleural membrane and that hand is the visceral pleural membrane, they will move together because these are sticking together. There's a negative pressure. So that's good. There's a negative pressure there. They're sticking together and there's no space. But if air gets in between the two, then I think you can see that the potential space will be converted into an actual space. And because there's nothing holding the two membranes together, they can fall apart. So here we have the parietal pleural membrane moving with the thoracic wall. Here we have the visceral pleural membrane stuck to it so it moves with it and we get normal lung inflation which is absolutely fine. But then if we get stabbed in the chest, we get air in between these two membranes. Now, if there's air between the membranes, the parietal membrane can still move, but now the visceral pleural membrane is not attached to the parietal pleural membrane and it can simply fall away. There's nothing sucking it to it anymore. And this is called a pneumothorax air in the pleural space and it will cause the lung to collapse. It will cause the lung to collapse. And if air carries on getting into the pleural space and the pressure builds up in the pleural space, that would be a tension pneumothorax. And that's really dangerous because it can push the heart and the major blood vessels to the side, causing extreme shock and death. Or in another situation, you might get damage to the lung and air can get from the lung into the pleural space, also causing a pneumothorax. And this can occur in a condition called spontaneous, spontaneous pneumothorax, which is actually quite common, often in young, often fit but thin men, although it can occur in other people as well. So if there's a spontaneous pneumothorax, damage to the pleural membrane, then air can get from the lungs into the potential pleural space, converting it from a potential pleural space into an actual space. Or other time, if there's trauma, blood can get into this space, again converting the potential space into an actual space, causing a, a haemothorax. Although if it's only blood that's causing the problem, you're likely to bleed to death before you die of the pneumothorax. Another application is pleurisy. Because these membranes are moving together, if there is any infection, for example you might have infection in the pleural membranes, and the infection will cause inflammation, and remember we said that the parietal pleural membrane especially is very rich in nociceptors, so inflammation of the pleural membranes is very painful. But of course the pleural membranes have to move to 
facilitate breathing. And what the patients will tell you is every time they breathe, it's like being stabbed in the chest with a knife because the pain coming from the parietal pleural membrane can be quite extreme. So in pleurisy, make sure you give these patients enough analgesic cover to make sure they can carry on breathing properly and breathing normally. So as always, many fascinating clinical implications of the anatomy and physiology. But the main purpose of this video is to understand the relationship between the parietal and the visceral pleural membrane, the way that they're sucked together with only a potential space in between, meaning that movement of the chest wall and movement of the diaphragm results in expansion of the lung.